Hi, my name is Mori Wilhite, and this is Katsumi's Kitchen. I run a Japanese cooking school in Indianapolis, and today I'm going to show you how to make teriyaki chicken, Japanese potato salad, and, and regular Japanese rice. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare the rice because it takes the longest. Today I'm going to be using the koshiskari, which is one of my favorites. It is a little bit pricey, but after you've tried it, you'll, want, you'll know why uh, it is a definite must. I already started with the steps. I have five peas for your preps. Pre-measure, I, I use two cups. Pre-check, uh, make sure there's no pebbles or insect parts. They're usually pretty clean. And then third, the third P is to pre-rinse. You want to make sure you rinse it because even though it is a harvest, it, all the parts, uh, the brown parts are buffed off. So there is a lot of starch in it. So you want to make sure you wipe, you rinse that off. And now we're at the pre-soaking stage. I've already had it pre-soaking for about 30 minutes. And now for the final part, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the rice cooker. The water level is a bit high, so I'm going to lower that a little and then we're going to go ahead and cook it. So I went ahead and put the water about a quarter inch on top of the rice. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the rice cooker and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next dish. The next dish I'll be making is, uh, or prepping is the teriyaki chicken. Mine, is, uh, my favorite is the teriyaki chicken with uh, ginger. Here is a, a huge breast, which is fine. I'm going to cut it in half. We're going to make two pieces well, two plates. And we're just gonna do about thin, bite-sized pieces, so to speak, when you're using your chopsticks. It'll be easy to pick up. At the store, you see a lot of overpriced teriyaki sauce. If you knew how simple and easy and not so expensive it is, I think you'll be terribly shocked. But how I teach my class in Indianapolis is uh, which uh, key Japanese ingredients you should buy in order to authentic, make authentic dishes. It's really not that hard. Most people have a problem with uh, what kind of, what Japanese ingredients to buy. So how I teach is that I have my Japanese ingredients out and I go ahead and have people take pictures. So after you're cooking in my kitchen, you'll go ahead and take pictures of everything. So when you go to the Asian Food Mart, you know exactly which brand to buy so you can easily replicate it so it's not too hard. It just the, the hardest part I would think is do you have a Japanese or Asian food mart close to your house, your area? There is a, luckily some of that in Indianapolis and everybody seems to be getting the ingredients. At the very least there is Amazon, they do have everything you need but um, hopefully it won't be too bad for you to get stuff. So I did do a salt and pepper. So I already did the salt and pepper on both sides. The next thing I'm gonna do is grate some ginger. This is a very nice contraption of grating. I love it. I'm not selling them, but I love it because it's very sharp and there are big holes. So what you could do is um, go ahead and grate the ginger on top. And then it falls in just nicely and evenly, which I love. And I like a lot of ginger, so I'll put a little bit more in. Put that aside. So the next is um, sake. Uh, I probably do use a lot of sake in my cooking. Sake itself has its own umami savory flavor that could add to your Japanese meals. I think this is a little bit higher quality of a Jumai grade. So I'm gonna take about a tablespoon, not a lot. Just put a little bit on it like so. Turn out really nice. Okay, and then now I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes so it can nicely marinate. Oh, sorry. Next, we're gonna make the, Jap the infamous Japanese potato salad. I've already boiled some potatoes. What you wanna do is get a fork 
to, um, you don't want to make mashed potatoes, but it's half mashed and half textured, so it, it will come out really, um, you know, it'll look good and also taste better. Do this real quick. As you can see, I just put one stroke through most of them. I want it kind of flaky, very good. The next thing is, uh, here is some cut cucumbers. I did it a little fancy, like quarter moons. Put a little bit of salt. You want to put some salt in it and mix it up because you want to sweat the moisture out. The other key recipe is this, the hard boiled eggs. We'll go ahead and do two. Find nicely chopped up and then add it to the, to the mix. We'll do that. So growing up, this was one of my favorites. Of course, one of the first things I learned when I was a kid. My mom was Japanese. She was the Japanese elitist food snob. And unfortunately, she raised two uh, food snobs in my sister and myself. We ended up having to learn how to cook Japanese food because we were never happy wherever we went to have food. But uh, I just actually learned enough to be totally annoying. So I just make it myself. And some salt and pepper. For some color, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of carrots and peas. As you can see, or maybe three. <laughs> Be nice and pretty. And my favorite, favorite, if you're Asian, you know what this is. This is the QP mayonnaise. We're gonna put some in. They're in Indiana, I'm finding them almost all over the place. Pardon the vulgarity. Let me take this out. Uh, this is really nice. You could put maybe about six little mounds here. Your Kewpie mayonnaise. If you didn't know, Kewpie mayonnaise is a modeled after our own American Kewpie dolls. But of course, as it went to Japan, it turned out a lot more cuter. Here is, I'm cheating with the rice wine vinegar. You don't have to, but I do like it to have a little bit of vinegar in my potato salad. I'm gonna take this and squeeze some of the moisture out. Don't want any soggy potato salad. A little bit more, and of course our ham. I'll cut this up real quick. And that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and put this in, and we'll mix it up. After you made it initially, you'll want to put it in the fridge for a few minutes so the all the yummy stuff will settle into it. Looks good. Next, we're gonna work on our dessert, which is the matcha chocolate covered strawberries. So this is very simple. If you didn't know, most Japanese people, most Asian people really, they do not like American sweets because it's too sweet. This is just enough to, uh, just sweet enough to say, oh yes, very subtle. So this is the sake again. Here is the matcha chocolate green tea powder that I use. It is at culinary grade. You could get premium, but that's just overpaying. But, you know, it's up to you. They usually have the culinary grade at the Asian Food Mart. So I'll go ahead, get the teaspoon one. I put two, just because I feel fancy today. So, I put this away. Now, before I do anything else, well, I guess I should heat them. I'm going to um, heat this up about 10 seconds in the microwave. You cannot put anything. We're gonna add it to the white chocolate here. You cannot add anything to white chocolate because it's cold, because it'll seize. So uh, a few more seconds on that. Then I'll mix it really hard. Matcha, if you haven't noticed, if you don't beat it up a little, it doesn't blend. So you have to mix it up a little bit. Excuse me. So here it is. It smells very nice. Looks very nice too. Mix it up really evenly. Even though we're making a dessert with this matcha, Chocolate, um, matcha is a very good health, for maintaining good health. Key ingredient of the antioxidant is great for your heart health. That's why it's the rage right now. Uh, there are so many fake ones out there. It could be a whole episode just on that alone, but I'm not gonna bore you with it. So here it is, mixed up most of it. So here's the melted chocolate from before. I just double boiled it for about 10 minutes and then you have it. I'm gonna add this too. All right, so we're just gonna mix it up nicely. 
And these are the uh, strawberries. I don't know if they're great or they're on steroids. I don't know, but they're very ginormous, but that's okay. It'll still work. All right, turned out really nice. There's a little bit of clumps. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip some in so we could have them nice and ready for us towards the end of the show. All right, well, we'll do a few here. I mean, it's just like any other way of dipping your, and it's really pretty green on red too. Right. Get a big one here. I do leave the green stems on for color contrast and also so I could grab it better. And that's pretty much it. Very simple. The key part is the taste. We did add real sake to it. So it'll cut down the sweetness and I hope you like it when you try this at home. I do advise my students that when they do, when they get into Japanese cooking, you want to use real sake versus cooking because the cooking sake, I find it tastes a little watered down. So um, I just buy the real stuff. Okay, next we're going to be working on the teriyaki chicken. If you didn't know, teri is a Japanese, two Japanese words. Teri is for shiny, yaki is grill. It's not necessarily marinated in Japanese, but you're uh, glazing the soy sauce um, onto the meat. But uh, we'll go ahead and make our teriyaki chicken now. It was from earlier when we had the salt and pepper, ginger. Yeah, it's ready. With sake in it, it should be really yummy. Put this in. I'm using uh, Chinese chopsticks because they're nice and long. Uh, they're extra long chopsticks so you don't touch the hot rims of the pots and pans. So how I do it, I go ahead and cook everything first. And then with the uh, leftover greasiness, a little bit of chicken grease, then I'll add that, use that to make the teriyaki. All right, so the uh, teriyaki chicken is cooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the plate here. Oh, I'm very happy with it. I didn't do American style by putting it in marinade. I'm gonna make the teriyaki sauce after I cook the chicken first. So anyway, so I have, I'm gonna do what I call the Japanese housewife trick. You're gonna get a piece of paper and then have it like so, have your chopsticks, and then at the end of your chopsticks, you could take out some of the oil without touching it at all. I'm gonna leave some of it in to put good flavor to your uh, teriyaki chicken sauce. Took out about, get half of it, all right. You don't wanna put the uh, this hot thing directly in the trash bin because you might burn the liner, so I'm gonna set it aside here for a few seconds before I put it in the trash. So we'll go ahead, Excuse me. We'll go ahead and make the uh, teriyaki sauce. I'm going to first put two tablespoons of white sugar. And then we're going to go ahead and put the, I, I like to use the low sodium kikkoman sauce for, keep your, you don't need to have that much salt in your life, I think. But. Right, one, and then two. What kind of cooking school did she go to? I didn't go to any cooking school. Everything I learned, my mother did go to cooking school in Japan when she was younger. And it wasn't because she was gonna work in the restaurant. Back in the day, women in Japan went to cooking school or sewing in order to become um, well prepared for marriage. So my mom opted for cooking versus sewing. And right before we're done, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon or, or a tablespoon of sake. Infuse some of that. And I'm gonna put a little bit more ginger in there. That's before I'm ready to. Don't put it in too early because it'll burn it. And that's pretty much it. People are just gonna go nuts over the way I just did this, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put some teriyaki sauce onto the chicken. It's a little bit watery, but that's okay. I 
はいどうぞオーケー、そう、なんかのしょうゆ、はるプレイ、よ、テディアキチキンディナー、トゥーセプラウェイズ。ファーストウェイ、アンゴンのしょうゆ、はるプレイ、イズノーマルウェイ、ウェイ、ノーマルウェイ、カインドファンシーのウェイ。そう、プッティス、ヘーズ、ヨー、コシヒカリライス。おっ、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、ヨー、So, a proper Japanese meal would have the colors black, white, red, green, yellow, and proportionality of 50% carbs, 25% protein, and 25% fiber. We made some pickled、uh, cucumbers earlier, so put that on the side. And of course, our matcha chocolate covered strawberry. Put that right here. Hi, Dozo. I'm also going to show you real quick how to make a real cute kawaii or cute bento. This is, I'm halfway done on a little teddy bear. So, this is the continuation of the.、Uh, Teriyaki chicken. We'll put some of the tomato cheese cutlets in here. I'll put it on this side over here, like this. And I have some of the pickled cucumber. I had to improvise with the foil a little, but that's okay. So, when you're making a proper、uh, bento, you kind of have to pack it in tight because it's a lunch. You're going to take it with you, so you don't want it going all over the place. So, what I'm gonna do is put some little eyeballs on our little teddy so he'll look, you know, cute and stuff, hopefully. Then I'll go ahead and put some strawberries in. Bit of, we put a little bit of the potato salad just to even this out. If you had a nice dinner and still want to take it out for lunch, you could re, you know, reposition it or redirect it. So, I know my guy looks like he's startled, but we're visiting New York for the day, so it turned out like this. Hi. I'm going to put it over here so you could have a nice view of it. Well, that's it. We went ahead today and made the matcha chocolate strawberries for dessert. And here is a kawaii bento with a、uh, slightly mortified little teddy bear. But there is the、uh, potato salad, green,、uh, teriyaki chicken, some pickled cucumber, and nice little cheese and tomatoes for your salad. Here is a plate you might want to consider when you're at the dinner table. Same stuff, but slightly differently arranged. If you、uh, want me to make some other Japanese dishes for you, please leave a、uh, comment down below. And also,、uh, if you happen to find yourself in Indiana for some reason near Indianapolis, you could come, check, come to my kitchen and learn、uh, how to make sushi or make ramen noodles. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Sayonara. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you.